That means it is definitely working and definitely going in. Even though that can is so cold, I can barely hold it. Okay, so today we're going to be reviewing this vacuum pump and R134A manifold gauge set. And we're actually going to use it to do an evac and recharge on my car. So let's open the box and let's see what comes inside. Okay, it comes with a nice carrying case with a nice handle. Okay, so here's your manifold gauge set and your hoses along with all the fittings that you need. Okay, here's your vacuum pump and also comes with a bottle of oil that you need for the pump. And lastly, this is a leak detector you can use to detect leaks with in your system. Okay, so before we go any further, we're going to need a good pair of safety glasses and you're going to need some gloves. You don't want refrigerant getting in your eyes and you don't want it getting on your skin because it can cause frostbite during the process if you're not careful. Okay, so my car's AC is not blowing cold air right now, and I have been suspecting all along that it has a very small leak somewhere because it has been gradually losing its cooling performance, say, over the last two or three months. So it seems to me that it's got a little leak somewhere. So I have already taken my car to a shop, and I have gotten the refrigerant evacuated out. There wasn't a whole lot in there. I'd say maybe a half a charge, and the shop reclaimed it for me and didn't charge me anything, which often shops will do if you just ask them to reclaim your refrigerant, and you don't want any Anything else done because they benefit from that they get to reuse your refrigerant but of course in your case if you don't have any refrigerant in your system at all then that doesn't matter to you you don't have to take it to a shop and do that the bottom line is do the responsible thing and don't let refrigerant out into the atmosphere because it's not good for the atmosphere so be environmentally responsible I'm going to take off my service port fittings this is your low side which is on a fat line your high side is going to be on your thinner line so take these caps off and if there's any dirt around these caps go ahead and clean the dirt off you don't want dirt to get inside these Schrader valves while you have these caps off make sure that the little o-rings are intact inside these caps these caps play a critical role in making sure dirt does not get into your service ports and also actually help seal the system as well so I'm in the process of assembling my hoses on my gauge set. You want to make sure that these hoses are only finger tight. You don't have to put a wrench on them. They have rubber gaskets in there that do the job of sealing for you so you don't have to crank down on them. So now the whole reason I'm doing an evac and recharge on my car today, even though that I suspect it has a small leak, is because we only have two or three months left of the summer. And if I can get another couple of months of cooling out of my AC system, I'm going to be happy. So that's why I am proceeding on with an evac and recharge. And I'm convinced that the proper way to do it is with a gauge set like this. So before you hook your vacuum pump up, which is what we're about to do, you need to make sure that your valves on your manifold are closed by turning them clockwise. Make sure they're snugged up, which they are. Okay, so before we connect our vacuum pump, we need to put our lines on the correct valves. And before you put them on, make sure that your valves are in the closed position, which is counterclockwise. Now the red goes on the high side, which is right here, and they just snap on with this quick connect. Low side is the same way. It's got that same quick disconnect on it just snaps right on. And don't worry about getting these mixed up because they'll only go one way. The high side valve is too big to go on this fitting and the low side valve is too small to go on this fitting. Okay, once you have your valves on your fittings, go ahead and open your valves and you're gonna do this by turning them clockwise. And don't feel like you got to bottom these things out because sometimes if you crank them all the way down, you can actually damage your Schrader valve. You'll kind of get a feel for when you get the resistance of it getting close to the bottom and just stop right there. You don't have to bottom it out. Same thing for the low side. Open the valve by turning it clockwise. And when you feel resistance enough that you feel like it's getting close to the bottom, go ahead and stop. Don't bottom it out. Like I say, you could damage the Schrader valve, especially on older vehicles. So both my valves are in the open position. And if there's any pressure in the system, you'll see it on your gauges. Right now you can see both my gauges are reading zero, which means there is no refrigerant in my system. And I know that for a fact because I had it all reclaimed out. Yours, of course, will say zero if all your refrigerant has leaked out. And yes, your gauges will work with your manifold valves in the closed position, which is what they're in right now. Okay, and before we hook up our vacuum pump, we're going to make sure it has oil in it. You can just use the oil that's supplied with the pump. And this could get a little messy, so I just put a paper towel under my pump here. And I'm just going to pour my oil in until it gets to somewhere close to the maximum level. You got a min level and a max level. Okay, and we are about there. I'm going to go ahead and stop. And it almost took this whole bottle of oil, actually. And our oil level is almost to the max line. Very important to make sure this pump has oil or it'll burn itself up. 
screw the cap back on. And then before you forget, go ahead and take off this exhaust cap before you turn it on. That's where the exhaust is going to go when it vacuums your system out. Okay, I've moved my manifold gauge set down a little bit so my hose would reach down to my vacuum pump. Okay, now we're going to turn our pump on. You'll hear it groan a little bit. That's normal. Now we're going to open both manifold valves. And you'll notice the pitch of that pump changing when you open both those valves. And that's because you're allowing the vacuum to have access to your entire AC system. And now what you'll notice is both of these gauges is drawn down below zero, indicating a negative pressure. So we're going to let this vacuum work for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to turn it off. And now what this pump is doing is it's actually drawing out all the air and all that moisture that is contained in that air, and it's coming right out of that exhaust port. A vacuum pump is absolutely crucial to a correct refrigerant charge. If you try to put in refrigerant without first evacuating the system with a vacuum, you're fighting a losing battle especially in a humid climate where there's so much moisture in the air okay so it's been about 15 minutes i'm gonna go ahead and shut the pump off and now what my gauges are telling me is that the system is now at a negative pressure 30 inches of mercury which is exactly what we want now what we're going to do is we're going to let this system sit for about 45 minutes and we're going to come back and we're going to see if these readings have changed any if our system continues to hold 30 inches of mercury then that means we don't have the leak and my case i think i have a very very small leak so mine may come up a little bit but we're gonna see i forgot to mention before you walk away for those 45 minutes go ahead and close these valves off you turn them clockwise to close them all right it's been 45 minutes let's see what the verdict is i pulled it down to 30 inches of mercury and it is now sitting at about 29 so that confirms my suspicion that i do have probably have a small leak somewhere but after sitting 45 minutes only losing one inch of mercury i'm pretty happy with that if the system had no leaks at all it would hold at 30 for the entire time but if all goes well i'm going to complete this job and i'll have enough cooling in my system to last me through the rest of the summer which is my goal eventually i will track down the leak but that's for another day so now what we're going to do is we're going to continue Continue to vacuum this system out for a solid hour to make sure that all the moisture and all the air is drawn out of the system before we put refrigerant into this system. Got to be patient during this process. This is the correct way to do it. But let's vacuum the system out for another hour. So we're going to turn our pump on first. And you can hear it gurgling down there. And now we're going to open our valves. You'll hear that pitch change for the pump, which means it is tapped into our AC system. And now we're going to let it sit for one solid hour before we attempt to put any refrigerant into this system to make sure that all the air and all the moisture is purged out of the system. Okay, so now it's been one solid hour. We're going to shut off our manifold gauges by turning them clockwise. Okay, manifold gauges are nice and tight, closed, and now we're going to shut off our vacuum pump. And let's examine our gauges. Looks like everything is good. We're down to 30 inches of mercury on both gauges, and that vacuum has been working for one solid hour. So we can be assured that all the moisture and all the air is out of the system, and now we're ready for a refrigerant charge. Okay, so now's a good time to talk about what refrigerant to use. Just look at the sticker underneath your hood. This is going to be on the bottom side of your hood or it might be down close to the engine. Mine tells me that I need HFC134A, which is the same thing as R134A. And likely yours is going to take the same thing. Unless your car has been manufactured before like 1996 or so, then you're going to be in the R12 range, which is quite uncommon these days. So the only other refrigerant you might run across is the new R1234YF, but you're generally only going to find that in vehicles manufactured after 2021 or thereabouts. So long story short, chances are you're going to be using the same thing I have, which is R134A. And you're also going to want to know how much to put in. Mine takes anywhere between 13.2 ounces to 15 ounces. Very important to know. And this is the refrigerant that we'll be using today. This is straight refrigerant, no additives, R134A, and it is a 12 ounce can. So since my system takes up to 15 ounces, I'm gonna need this can plus a little bit out of another one. For the purpose of what we're doing today, do not get a refrigerant that has any additives or oil mixed in with it because unless you replace a component, you do not need to add any oil. The vacuuming process does not remove any oil out of the system. It only removes air and moisture. 
Okay, double checking, making sure that our manifold valves are closed. We're gonna disconnect our vacuum pump. If the needles on your manifold gauges move when you disconnect the vacuum pump, you'll know that you didn't shut these manifold valves down tight enough and you'll need to repeat the vacuuming process. So now I'm gonna move my gauges up higher since I don't need my vacuum pump anymore. That way I can see them a little bit better as I'm putting in the refrigerant. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to connect the valve that come in the kit to the top of the first bottle of refrigerant, making sure that the valve is all the way open before we screw it down on the can. We'll give it a little shake. Now we're going to connect the line that was attached to our vacuum. We're going to connect it to our can. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now keep in mind the whole time our system is still under vacuum right now, which is what we want. Okay, so the can is attached. Now we're gonna run the valve down and pierce our can. And you'll hear it pierce. Okay, now simply we're gonna run it back up and that's gonna open it up and it's gonna send refrigerant up this yellow hose. As you can see, our gauges are still reading 30 inches of mercury. And now since this system is on a vacuum, it's actually going to help install the first can very seamlessly because the can is pressurized and the system is under a vacuum. So when we start the process, it's going to go in fairly quickly. So now we have to purge the air out of this yellow hose before we start doing anything else. And the reason for that is we don't want to send air into our nicely vacuumed out system. So the way to do that is just remove this center cap right here. Just take a little pocket screwdriver and just give this little Schrader valve a little tap. And you're going to hear the air come out of it. And simply screw your cap back on. Okay. So now all the air has been removed out of this line right here. Okay, so now we're going to start the car and we're going to turn the AC on high. We're also going to put the windows down and then I'm going to show you a little trick. So here's my trick. If you have a fan, turn it on and put it right in front of your car. And what that's going to do is going to simulate you riding down the road, which will give your air conditioning realistic conditions. Now, before you go start your engine, make sure that your hoses are not down in the way of your fan belt or any other component that may chafe against these hoses. Okay, so now we're ready to start adding refrigerant. What we're going to do is we're going to open the low side manifold valve only. Okay, and then you'll see it start to go in. And then you'll hear the compressor click on. And you'll feel your can starting to get very cold, which is a good thing. Now you want to keep your can upright during this process. Turn it upside down, it's going to send straight liquid through the system, which is not a good thing. It's better to be safe and let it only take in the vapor. So my can is frosting up pretty good as you can see. So that means it is definitely working and definitely going in. And well, that can is so cold I can barely hold it. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of activity in my sight glass anymore. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on its side, give it a little shake, and you'll start to see some refrigerant in that little sight glass again. It's not a good idea to completely turn it upside down. Even when you're coming to the end of it, you may have to just dip it quick, but kind of keep it horizontal anytime you're just trying to get that last little bit of refrigerant to go in there. Okay, so I can safely say that can of refrigerant is empty. So this is how you properly change to the next can. You want to take your low side valve on your manifold, turn it all the way closed. And remember, we didn't open the high side at all. Okay, then on the can, what you want to do is turn that valve all the way closed, run it all the way down. And what that's going to do is it's going to trap and seal this line, this yellow line right here, so air will not get into it during the change of the cans. Okay, so that's sealed. Now we can spin our can off. Okay, second can. So remember, these cans are 12 ounces. I've already put 12 ounces in. My system holds a maximum of 15, so I'm going to aim to put 15 in there, no more. So I need to put only 3 ounces of this second can in. Now how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to use the scale. That's how I'm going to do it. Okay, first things first, let's go ahead and screw our second can of refrigerant on. And it's going to be piercing it this time as we screw it on. Reason being is we have that valve run all the way down to seal the yellow line. So you might hear a little hiss when you screw this second can on here. Indeed. Okay, let's go ahead and secure it up quickly. Okay, so now that is sealed. Now we do not have to re-purge this yellow line again like we did with the first can, simply because we had it sealed off. All right, let's turn our scale on here. 
Okay, so as you can see, this can weighs about 18 ounces, 18.3 ounces. So what we need to do is we need to, since we only need three ounces out of this can, to complete our 15 ounce charge, we need to take out three ounces. So 18.3 minus three is gonna be 15.3. So we need to open up our low side valve on our manifold, just like we did before, until this gets down to 15.3 ounces, or as close as we can get to it. All right, so we have to open our valve on our can. And let's see how close we can get to 15.3 by opening up our manifold valve on the low side. And we're gonna to want to open up this valve pretty slow. And I'm watching my scale, and it's slowly going down, 16.5, 16.4, so it's slowly going down. We're at 15.9, 15.8, so we'll go ahead and start closing it off now. Okay, as you can see, we're at 15.2, and that's about as close as I can get it. So now our system has a complete charge of 15 ounces. So now what I'll do is I'm going to close this can completely off and I'm going to open my low side manifold valve one more time to suck out the remaining refrigerant in this yellow line. And that's mainly to be environmentally responsive so it doesn't spew to the atmosphere when I disconnect the can. Okay, so that's how you properly charge your AC system. Now, I've still got a problem. As the gauges tell me, even with 15 ounces, a complete refrigerant charge in my system, the negative side is still down in the vacuum territory. It's not even positive. The high side is only reading 100 PSI when it should be reading closer to 200. So I've got another problem that I have to figure out. And I wouldn't know that if I didn't have these gauges. So I've got more work to do. Luckily, my my compressor did suck in all the refrigerant that it was supposed to so at least I know it has a perfect charge to a T. It's got 15 ounces of refrigerant in it. Being that this is still pulled down in the vacuum what's happening is the compressor is pulling, 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 trying to pull refrigerant through the evaporator and through the expansion valve. I have a hunch that it's going to be one of those two. It's probably going to be a restriction in the evaporator or a restriction in the expansion valve. One or the other. But again, I wouldn't know that unless I had the these gauges hooked up to tell me. So I couldn't be more pleased with the quality of these gauges. They're made of very good material. I think they're gonna last a really long time. The vacuum pump is a very heavy duty piece of equipment. I'm pretty sure I'll never have to obtain another set of gauges to work on any of my AC systems that I have in any of my cars, because they're all R134A systems. Even though I didn't use the leak detector, it does look like a good piece of equipment as well. So I hope you've gotten something out of this review. Even though I didn't fix my AC system today like I wanted to, I'm one step closer at least to fixing my problem. And by process of elimination, I now know since I have done a proper evacuation with a vacuum pump and a proper refrigerant charge, I now know that I can eliminate that as a source of my issue. And I wouldn't have been able to do it without this vacuum pump engage set. So I'm very pleased with it. Thanks for watching.